Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity and welcome back to Starcon New York City LAN from 2023, played not that long ago. Bottom left in corner we have Nyokan starting as the yellow Terran, bottom right in corner we have Neon Sword starting as the pink Terran. This is going to be on Neo Sylphid. And uh, also, cheers, the map pool actually got updated for all the people, all the players out there. <clears throat> I will be curious to see if Nyokan does more of the same on this map, mostly because Neo Sylphid being a outside of being an interesting three-player map, has pretty droppable areas back here. It doesn't have the same sort of bunny hop thing you can do where you can siege up here. Well, I guess you can siege still in this corner and, and range and cut off a little bit of territory. Most of the construction happens a little bit lower on the map overall. But the danger, I think, of doing that on this map is it is a wide-open natural expansion choke. And so it's... Uh, and there's also, if your opponent is getting aggressive, there's high ground opportunities here where you can kind of high ground your... Actually, I actually can't remember. This might not count as high ground, but point being you you can... There's at least this brush. <laughs> you can kind of wedge your opponent in uh, from there. So a little bit, I think a little bit riskier on a map that doesn't have high ground because I think to, when he had the three siege tank to one advantage, there was still the high ground that night that he would have had to fight into. So a siege tank, not just a siege tank, one versus three, but a siege tank on high ground with that two thirds mischance. So I guess mathematically that might end up still, mathematically that should still work out for Nyokan. So maybe I should digress as far as the threat. But here you don't have that high ground to work with. It looks like we do have a barracks and a gas grab on both ends. But I think game one really demonstrated how strong Nyokan is in this matchup. His micro is really sharp, and his game, just his, uh, the brain whirls. He's just a phenom, and I, part of the reason I love having him as a co-caster is, as I know, he's just studied everything. He's got the timings down. He's got, his brain is just huge. He's got that big brain that I can rely on. And so me, being uh, less of a player and more of just the guy who casts stuff and tries to talk about it and keep it entertaining, you know I can rely on him for the details that I will inevitably miss. Looks like we do have three SUV on gas on both ends. Initial Marine being produced. And we'll see if those SUV get pulled off. It looks like they're already pulled off for Nyokan. Are they remaining? They're not remaining for Neon Sword. Nyokan going, or sorry, Neon Sword going to scout 12 o'clock location first. Nyokan checking the middle of the map and making his way to the bottom right. So he is going to end up with first scout here. Marine actually canceled, it looks like. So Neon Sword maybe trying to save a little bit more resources to get a faster command center. Nyokan is going to discover that he's built a marine to start. Sometimes, even that little bit, sometimes can provoke some counter-aggression. And we'll see if that is in fact the case. It looks like the marine's just going to hold position currently. But uh, I've definitely seen that, at least at the Korean pro level, they're like, oh, you're down a marine? I'm going to build a couple vultures and be aggressive. So no marine production whatsoever from Neon Sword, lifting off that barracks, starting to float it out. Let's see if Nyokan sits at the natural expansion, because this is a lack of marine. He does have an opportunity to disrupt the natural expansion being built. And it looks like he is going to, yeah, sidle out here, keep that SCV build, uh, busy. And as a result, he's actually going to get that command center constructed a little bit more rapidly. And content with the uh, disruption he's done, he's going to bring that 10 health SCV back. It looks like Neon sort of able to get some continuous scouting information, a little bit low on health, trying to account for all the supply depots getting taken out by that vulture. First Vulture out on the front for both players. Machine Shop dropped after that initial Vulture, but it looks like Nyokan... I think when I've seen the pressure, it's been three Vultures and go. And we'll see if Nyokan does that this time. So there's the first two. It looks like rather than going, he's just going to grab a second factory. And I'm wondering if we are going to, in fact, see the three factory Vulture opener versus something else. It looks like this time Neon Sword dropping... The starport maybe saw that build order and he's like i like that build order let me go wraith for uh, wraith first this time although he is dropping an armory behind this so still going to have anti-air i'm not sure i like the ar I, i'm wondering if this is more a mental error on neon sword where he usually plays armory first in his build orders because usually when you go starport first you delay the armory a little bit mostly because you know you can get wraith or something along those lines to counter what's being produced um, but we will see what the plan is. Plus one weapons being upgraded. No control tower or wraith being produced. Interesting. And plus one weapons. And I missed Nyokan moving out with the initial three vultures. 
Siege Tank is there to push it back. It looks like Naokin trying to drop that barracks to create some clutter to make it more challenging for that Siege Tank maneuver. And as a result, yeah, he's gonna have he's gonna have a free Vulture and attack moving, he attacks the barracks instead of running into the main. You can see how frustrating that can be and get some additional SCV kills out of this. So Naokin increasing an SCV lead. Now you might have even seen that starport right now. Okay, now the add-on being dropped. I'm not sure if he not sure if Naikun, I think he might have gotten a visual on it as well. Let's see if he lifts that barracks off. Otherwise, a Goliath, a couple of Goliath have been produced, so yeah, potentially in recognition or potentially just wanting the build order. I'm wanting to play this build order out. He does need to get a machine shop down and get some additional siege tanks out and play ASAP, because right now Neon Sword with the two siege tank win, and siege tanks beat both Goliaths and Vultures out in the field. They're just so tanky. But it looks like interesting play here. Nyokin following up with a control tower starport himself. Not going to lead Wraith. So I take it back. Maybe this is a standard build order. He's got that armory as well. Ignore me altogether. I don't know my TVT as well as I should. <clears throat> Machine shop plopping down. Barracks just hovering over this. It looks like that is delaying. So the control tower do uh, dropped. It's not researching cloak. But it looks like that is going to spot that initial Wraith making its way out. Neon Sword actually moving very, very early with those initial siege tanks. The Goliath scooping up. An SCV might be able to move out and spot. We'll see. Nyokin currently leaving no defense on his front. The Wraith is preoccupied by this barracks. I don't think Neon Sword's going to expect Goliath drops on top of anything right this second. So it could be very easily caught off guard. He doesn't have cloaking. Okay, now researching cloaking with that Wraith. But is he going to be in time? Dropping the barracks. Killing some additional SCV. And yeah, completely catching Neon Sword off guard. Lifting up. The, uh, just scooping them up at a siege tank range. And just going to plop a distance away to try to interrupt that. Oh, interrupting gas is absolutely huge. Oftentimes gas is... You can tell which player is able to harvest more gas, and that's the player who's ahead, in theory, in most TVT matches, period. But look at the abuse that Nyokin's doing with just these Goliaths and that dropship. Tanks can't attack air. We don't have an additional Wraith out currently. And having done a good amount of disruption, it looks like he's just going to back out. And now he's inverting it. So rather than going for... He feels comfortable enough to grab an additional command center. And is also, rather than following, going dropship, or going Wraith into dropship, he's going dropship into Wraith as far as a follow-up, and also dropping some factories behind this. So now, all of a sudden, the, the one problem is he's going to be running into a uh, cloak. Does he have... So Wraith pecking away at Siege Shanks back here. This is really going to tax that Wraith, because it can't go after that dropship, because he needs to go assist that Siege Shank from getting... Nyokin's everywhere right now. So he's got Wraith pecking away at the siege tanks on the front. He's got Goliath dropping in the back to create economic disruption right there. And he's continuing to macro on top of this and really getting some gas disruption overall. Plus two weapons. He is behind as far as the weapons upgrade goes behind all of this, but he's got nearly double the supply count and a third command center up. So I don't think he's over overly concerned. Neon Sword still hasn't evicted the Wraith He's been so concentrated on these Goliaths at the natural expansion. Hasn't had the wherewithal. And now actually doing a full pull of the mineral lines from the natural. Siege Tank now getting pecked away at once again. And Siege Tanks and Marines starting to march to Neon Sword's natural expansion. Nyokin not kidding around. He's saying, let's get out of round one as rapidly as possible. Siege Tanks assaulting that command center. Can't lift off because you've got Wraith right there. As soon as that Wraith reposition, it looks like Neon Sword managed to get his own dropship up, but as soon as he has a... As soon as that Wraith actually makes its way to that Siege Tank to the north, it's a shot or two away. How much damage do Wraith do to ground? It's eight, so yeah, it would be two shots. One advantage for Neon Sword, though, is this is going to be plus two weapons pretty quick. But he's locked out of his natural expansion. He's going up three bases versus one. Oh, I'm just waiting for that. Is it even going to happen? Okay, Cloaking was researched. SCV's trying to group repair that command center to keep it alive, and Nyokin just exiting with what's left. Oof. 
This is brutal now. Naokin just throwing out siege tanks all over the front. The marine that was stranded gets wiped out. That one siege tank is the luckiest siege tank in the entire Terran Armada right now. Or maybe not. What? Maybe not. Finally getting wiped out. I missed a drop back at the main. It looks like it's going to be siege tanks versus SCVs. So that's at least something. It looks like Naokin did a full pull because he honestly can afford to, even if he loses these SCVs and pulls to the north, he's still got this very saturated base up right there. And Nyokin, GG right there from Neon Sword. Nyokin just brutalizing Neon Sword in this game and showing why he's so good in this matchup. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for listening.